and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances of earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Thank you for sorting out all sorts of things for us and making it clearer and easier for us to accomplish your divine targets in our specific ministries and churches. I ask this morning, Lord, that you come and cap it up. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Every remaining thing in your heart that you need to pass across to us don't just teach it to us. Establish it in our lives. Breathe upon us again with your breath. In such a way that your word becomes flesh in us. And your wisdom becomes working knowledge. That we can't miss it. Because it's real and it's alive in us. And it will enhance productivity. Fast track our ability to generate results. And bring glory to your name. We thank you. We bless you. The greatest thing I ask is that we don't just live with the skills of ministry, the skills of leadership, that we we'll live with the spirit of leadership. With our personal lives changed, these things become personal DNA, personal culture in our lives. And then it won't be a struggle to do it. We give you thanks and glory. Cause every one of us to begin to reproduce sons. Destroy the spirit of bondage and slavery. Bet in us the spirit of sonship. We give you thanks and glory. In Jesus name. Amen. Poverty, poverty, poverty. And now this is now what God was telling me. He said, Dominion says you should convert poverty to a tool of mission. That every church should go and come up with some form of programs. The one I'm trying to 
initiate with Pastor Shola. I went to Aja, that you are round about, and met with some groups. There's a friend of mine, so he was one that was sharing with me um, a couple of things. That Aja, there are women groups, there are male groups that do some form of a social system because people are poor. Just 10,000, 20,000 to help people's business. And what they were asking from me is not free money because they already have structure. They even said they want to add interest. And I was telling them I'm not interested in interest. It's small money to be given to uh, traders and pity and they recover it back for you. The structure is already there. Meanwhile, at the back of my own mind, I, will, I wanted to give them free money. And I've been cracking my head how to create the structure so that, you, you know, but now that they are even willing to return with interest, that made our life. So you see what it is. It is a program to provide small, small, just bring one million, 10,000 10, affects 100 people. But in social project, you don't need to affect too many people. It's like healing. You come to crusade, there are 2,000 people that are sick. Just pick one cripple, one ba 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 ba. That is it. Make altar call. So because the true issue is that that thing you call miracles are advanced. It's not the main issue. God is after souls. That's why Jesus passed for three and a half years the temple. If three times in a year they go to Jerusalem to appear before God. Three times in a year he will pass that temple. And he did not do anything for that man begging. Next year he passed three times. He didn't do anything for him. Third year he passed three times. I know, I know, I know how most of how we think. If everybody is not healed, God is not moving. You are not serious. Maybe you don't understand. If you heal everybody today, who will save the, the souls that are perishing tomorrow? There must be something left to get the attention of each people, each generation. Because the miracle is not the program. Salvation is the program. The miracle is the bait you use to catch the fish. That's how it is with social projects. So it's not about going to feed everybody. You know what normally happens? The rest will still go back to the world untouched. You just take it. Ten people. Or twenty. Manageable. But that will lead to massive. And it's in your territory. Because... I was saying, okay, we'll come to Aja today. They said, no, pastor, if you do it in Aja, they will collect money and just go. They are not safe. Do it in your base. Don't you see? They will come. The whole market will empty there. All the women in Aja market will empty there. You pray for them. He said, he said another thing, one of the ladies told me, it's not just the money that we need. We need your prayer. We are facing a lot of problems here. You don't understand market, pastor. There are a lot of other things that happen inside market. People bring charms. A lot of things happen. He said, we need the prayer. And we need you to talk to us. If you also can tell us how to... That some of these people don't even know how to save, how to do this. When they have problems, they carry both the capital. He said, I said, we have all those things that we've been doing it for young people. He said, ah. So they have different groups. The youths, even their liaise. They are, all these are organized groups. Even the motor pack whatever they're all organized group so is what do you package do you have for them can you imagine that if you know poverty is a very big issue now in africa you look at our country you can see you can make it a two for mission as a matter of fact for me particularly when i bring out money to do that i'm not planning to get it back but if they are organized, say they can get it back. It's a good thing so that you can recycle the money. Because if they know how to get it, they, they, and these people are so organized, though, they have people who co sign, they have different methods. Like the ones, small, small ones that are doing, no, but the money can't get lost. So it's just to bring it out and pull the whole system in. And, um, you know, 
when they recycle, the money too will want it to go to new people. We are not, uh, not interested in uh, anybody giving money back to church because once you start creating obligation that owing you, sometimes hatred comes with debt. Do you know that? Do you like people you are owing? You don't want to see them. <laughs> if you dodge it, <laughs> that's why you hear all those stories about Shylocks, all these Jewish write ups. They messed up the Jews in Europe, some of those literature guys. And it ended up creating real hatred that ended up destroying their businesses and all. Here we are creating favor with community. We want to collect the whole community. Look into poverty. Look into job creation. Look into preparing people to get the best jobs. That we're doing a job, whatever, whatever. And you can bring in leaders of institutions, banks, insurance, all the major employers, and bring them to come and talk. What are the things you will look for? To come and like, you tell the whole city. You won't have space, so it's you that will run. It's you that will run. Realize that the two greatest key for advancing the kingdom is supernatural evangelism or practical evangelism. What they call practical Christianity is love in action. That's deploying the tool of social intervention. The only thing is that you know that you're out of order once anything you're doing, you start spending more than 5% of your stuff. Yes, there are rules. You know, everything has principles that guide it. You know you have already, you know, because once you start doing it and you are draining, you, you want to donate blood to help somebody that is dying. But you have donated to the level that you now you are sick. You are out of order. You donate part time in a measure. You replenish before you. That's why sometimes they even check to know if you are qualified to donate. So there are little, little things. Can you imagine organizing football competition? I'm bringing out, you know, look at your environment. There are different things. If you have a lot of I do, you think about what can get their attention. But I'm letting you know, God particularly is pointing out poverty, joblessness, poverty, job creation, world creation, entrepreneurship development, skill acquisition, and other things that has to do with helping people put food on the table. There is a governor. I kind of like. The people, elites, hate him. Every time, every now and then, he's in the news. Governor Fayose of Ikit. Of course, I was in the airport one day and we're in the executive law. He walked in wearing shorts. I said to Pastor Sarah, I like that governor. The elites think he's a fool. The man is very wise. He has found a secret. The secret is identification with the masses. They can kill people for him. At the end of the day, he will go down if he can keep a few other things in check. If just a few. He will go down as one of the greatest governors they ever had. The governor that was there before him was a performing governor. I was with him. We were sitting in first class flying to Accra and I engaged him. Fire me. A good guy. Very nice gentleman. He should still be the governor. Because he's doing a good job. He should finish. But Fire said, understand something. Government of the elites. This ministry of the elites that some of us are doing. Ministry of the elite. You are only after bankers. Only after the rich. Only after... Let me show you a secret. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. If you go to Isaiah, where he picked it from, you still see that what happens is that when you touch the masses, you start pulling a lot of crowd. Then the elite start respecting you. Is that not why the United Nations is not respecting you? Let it be that you are going for the elite. You will never get their attention. And this touching the masses doesn't mean that you heal everybody or solve every problem. It's just be making example. Is that no? This is 
the TB junction that everybody's calling devil is wiser than the pastors that are supposed to be righteous. And I don't know how Jesus will handle it on the judgment seat. He will say, the one you will say is a bad guy, is using the principle of the kingdom. And you guys that claim to be the good guy are doing nothing. You know, Muslims are, are, are beginning to do this thing too. No, just go to from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Can your anointing go beyond preaching and go to solving problems? To preach the gospel to the poor. That's the one the Pentecostals do. Okay, heal the broken heart. This is another area. The seven keys to healing any type of wound, emotional wound, broken heart, and all of that. To preach deliverance to the captives. Bring back deliverance, faith clinic. Bring it back to the church. You don't have to be the one doing it. Every Sunday, don't just close service and let people go. I, Lagos have said, once service closes, you have so many activities going on. People are in another group receiving healing. Some people are actually going. The people that answer what I call, when we don't allow them to go. They are going for foundation school. Because why will you let them go? Then you say when you come next, and usually about half, more than half will not show up. Let them start it there. They go and do one or two courses. So, you know, an, another group is somewhere receiving cancer. Another group to go from job, career. They are, they turn that your church into... Once you say the grace, don't do church beyond two or four. Maybe two hours to the point. Then say the grace and let different things start. Is that neighborhood of five. Hey, that's the Sabbath day now. That's the day the priest walks. So walk. Monday, sleep. Don't use Monday to do. Rest. Take your wife out. Go and attend to your children. Tuesday, ministry should start. Ministry is only once in a week. Too. Every Saturday, bring your people out. Let them pray. Just one hour. Seven to. Then let them go out to win souls. To do good works. <laughs> so much. To get into a street and clean the street. We are in Dominion City street cleaners. Do you know what you are preaching? You are going to collect the whole city. Even the street where the church is, to come out on Saturday and have a group of people, they wear that and come and clean it and ask neighbors, do you have those being? Do you have anything we can... You have, you have won the city, oh! Ha. You've collected your city. Try this this year, just this year, and see what will happen. You know, Pastor, you're building a church. The whole neighborhood where you're taking church, you can collect both former church members and those who belong to churches. Good works. Good works. Was it not that one of our group that, like this thing they call sanitation, since people are going to sit down from 7 to 10, eh? turn it into mission. You get people to come out to do things without three hours. Go clean people. Or, you know, one group turned it into time to number street. They found out the houses don't have numbers. So when people are coming here, they, it's very hard to locate. They went to the local government, got the permission, brought, and they carry paint where Dominion City, all the landlords were happy. All the... Uh -uh. If you leave the local government to come and do it, they might start adding money and some other things to it. They paid, bought the paint, did the order, brought real artists to do. And each one you do, be recording it. That's how you get the attention of the powers that be. The, the one people suspect is miracles. Their suspicion could be, where is the power coming from? You can't argue with good works. Love is an universal language. Muslims, doesn't matter who they are, they hear it. You know, for example, now, to crash this thing going on in a way, we can introduce a special charity program for the Muslim youths. Because if you also look among them, you see a lot of mess. You see ignorance, you see just to encourage maybe education among them or to encourage uh, entrepreneurship. Program. Case is over. 
All these talk, uh, hate, whatever, they will join church. They end up in church. Just a matter of time. You know, we did a medical whatever in Lagos, and it was a mox that was used because the, the man said, this thing free. He said, yeah. He opened mox. He said, turn the mox into a hospital. And our people were treating people, treating. On Sunday, this delegation of Muslims wearing cap in church, and they were wearing cap inside church. You make out call, they give their life. We are worried because the, the man, his children, he said, carry them. They then to become useful. Anyway, you know, in the south, like Lagos, um, it's not the center of Islam you find in some part of corner. <laughs> their they, own is still manageable, you know. So I'm not sure in the north, even if you feed them, they, you might convert the kids, but uh, whether the, ch the parents will tell you just carry them like that, uh, I don't know. Anything can happen, but the environment is not the same. Heal the broken hearted. This problem of broken heartedness, if you know how many millions of people are suffering from this thing, don't make a relationship a hit and run thing once in a while. Matters of, make it a weekly event. A weekly event. There are singles. You start them with tapes like uh, rules of engagement and those tapes that will help because they are always hitting and missing. Then they are married. Start events and use it to. And when I say start event, open it for the city. That this is what goes on. You come out, your marriages are sorted out, your relationship. When you get there, use relationship to grow a big church. Don't go there and just start wasting your life. Since God has given you that gift, use it to grow a big church. You put something within the week, open it for the whole city, born again or not. You want good marriage, you want to find a good husband, this program, singles. This one, you want to, the marriage already have to work. And from there, they will be coming to church. So not everybody will come to church initially. So we'll see go to there. But as time goes on, has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the camp. Bring back deliverance. Bring back healings. Apart from the general one you minister, maybe like night of glory, I'm talking about weekly thing, weekly. Every Sunday, people are being healed. Every Sunday. You don't have to do healing in your preaching or whatever. But one service ends. All the sick people. So you make contact with those who give their life to Christ. They take them to MVP from there to foundation school. Those who, who need healing and all that, they come out for and they move them to fake clinic end. And people, and if you do, in a year, if you see the amount of gifts of the Holy Spirit that will come will develop among your people, people are carrying these gifts when they are sitting in your church. People, oh, oh come meet fire. When they get there, is nothing there for them to do their, with their fire. After the fire cools down, give them something now you will see. Those who have that gift, they will go there and be, you will see what will be happening there. And then, people who have need for deliverance and other. Oh yeah, is what has this one is troubling you? They come to visit you, beat you in the night. You have foundation, your family, nobody. Pro oh yeah, this side, they go there. And then, of course, encounter the teacher should be happening at least every two months. Because if you are doing evangelism, like I said, <laughs> you can't do enough encounter to solve. To deal with people's problems. Recovering of sight to the blind. That's where teachings like by uh, foundation school, DLI, and all the other teaching. Capacity building is the way forward. Training is the way forward. That's how you are going to build reliable people, strong people. Set at liberty those that are blues. Uh, these are sick people. to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is about finance, prosperity. The first one, gospel to the poor, is not about finance, it's about salvation. This one is about finance, it's about breaking poverty. So that's what I'm telling you. 
create programs, even just programs where you prepare people to go and get the best jobs in town. Programs that are designed to help people start businesses. And the agencies of government that are providing funds now, you bring the leaders of those agencies in your state to show your people how to ride there to get the phone. You win all these different things. It's the same people you go and invite. And you're doing this for the youth. Don't say you're doing it for church, for the youth, or for this, or for women. They have about three programs to empower women. You go and bring the leaders of the thing. And you are doing this weekend for women empowerment. Because you can't get the men to get that money. So it's women in your church. You correct them to start businesses. To, they bring people, train them, coach them on different things. And there are ways to write the proposals in order to get it. There are criteria they set. They have given people. Even among our brethren, there are people that have collected us as much as 20 million. 7 million, 8 million, 10 million. The government that is in place now is doing a lot, but people don't know. The Boko Haram thing and all that is overshadowing most of what is going on. But how much of it are you, your people benefiting from? Acceptable year of the Lord is Jubilee. Jubilee has to do with breaking any form of bondage, especially poverty and debt cancellation. If you go and read, study it, you will see what it is. Jesus said, the anointing deals with these seven things. And if you show it in Isaiah, and I added one more thing, the day of vengeance of our God. Uh, he removed that one here. He removed it. The last thing there is the day of vengeance. Uh, I don't think a year should pass. You should not talk to people about their eternal destiny. Life after death, such things, you know. I've shown you examples. I bring Pastor Victor. I bring, you know, Ivarin and some of those. You can also learn to teach about the coming of Jesus and what happens beyond that. We have written books. And at least once a it helps to keep people living right. So that your people will not just prosper on earth and miss it. And it. Show that James, chapter 2. Find the verse where it started. Let's just look at one small thing in it. And I will. It's a principle there I want to just point out. Don't do ministry. Are you not then partial in yourself? No, that's not where it started. Let's start from verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect of persons. Don't do ministry that is segregated. You're only going for the rich, the elites. If you look at the list I just read in Luke chapter 4, you see. Or you say your ministry is only going for the poor. You leave out the other people in the site. You won't have the money to do those projects you are talking about. Both the church and you will be broke. So let the rich come, but let them release to be able to touch the other group. Actually, if you have very wealthy people, you can even give them sponsorship of one of the projects. Like I say, scholarship for this. You think I'm, I'll go and get somebody to sponsor it. Actually, I also have a fund. That's the truth. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't do it with respect of persons. Verse 2. If they are coming to your assembly, a man with gold ring, goodly apparel, a wealthy person, power dressing, and then they are coming also a poor man in vile remnant. What made the soul of the rich more important than the soul of the other one? Jesus died for everybody. These two groups come, verse 3. And you have respect to him that wearing the gay clothing. He's not gay like gay. <laughs> and said to him, sit down here in a good place. And then you say to the poor, stand out there 
or sit here under my foot, sit on the floor. I'm glad you people don't have classification of seat. Partial in yourself, and you have become judges of evil thoughts. Hacking, my beloved brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world to be what? Rich in faith. I ask God why. He said it's when people are in problem that they seek God. He said these ones that have everything. Come for the like They don't have time. I'm in Dubai. I'm in America. We're in board meeting. Our bank is this. That's why many of them are not developed. It's not that a rich person cannot be developed to be rich in faith. Abraham was. But usually... So take advantage of when people are still struggling. It's a wilderness period for them to be made strong in the faith. Because by the time, because that thing is not going to last forever. By the time sh they shift out of it, if you have not used that period to ground them, you will never get the opportunity again. It's like raising children when they are still small. There are some things you need to put in them. You miss all those time. It's going to be hard. That's why if you put program every day, they will be there. You say revival is flowing. They will be the one that will come out by 4.30. They need God. Which will say, which one is that? Even if God is moving, I have been there on Sunday. What are, what are you going to do? You start harassing the wife. Meanwhile, he's a church member. Every day you are in church. I don't know what you are doing with that pastor. <laughs> I'm even suspecting the pastor. <laughs> God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. Convert poverty as a tool of mission. The people will not stay there forever, but that period is a huge opportunity to give them something that money cannot buy. Then money will not come, and they already have it. Now, these are the ones that know that they are God-made. The God made people, usually they will give to the kingdom till they die. There is this one that believe that they are self made. They are your problem. If you see anybody that comes to church and is troubling the pastor, troubling the church, he has more of self confidence than God confidence. They think they can do, yes, and that's what causes the problem of their type. They are power hungry. They are position hungry. There are sometimes there are also poor people made by God, but they are forgotten. You know the scripture keeps saying, thou shalt remember the Lord your God. It is he that give, give the power to men. People that God has made, but they have forgotten how, what they went through. They will come and challenge pastors, do all kinds of things. Had God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. Is it that he doesn't want the rich in the kingdom? No. The rich has a problem of pride. They have a problem of making time for God. They have a problem of not being poor in the heart. That statement is hard for a rich man to enter. God prefers poor slaves that came out of Egypt. He now gives them a promised land. When they are wealthy, they remember where they come from. So he helps them to also assess eternal life. But the normal that Dangote start coming to your church, don't clap too much. You know, sometimes such people don't give. Like the ones that are busy analyzing, what is he doing with church money? Okay, he, another guy again. What's happening? But he has all the things in his house, but he's now analyzing the pastor. Men of God should be humble. They should, be, they should mind how they spend money. They should mind the kind of watch they wear. That watch was shining while, while you were preaching. So many times you carry yourself and go and put all your effort in them, but they're the ones that are causing all the problem. That's why your church is not growing. Because the people that will go and do evangelism, the people that will come out for prayer, the people that will come out for other things, these ones are 
They will even want you to kneel down and beg them just to help put roof on the church. That's why what God does, he sets them up with some problems. During that point, they need God. Pastor, he has started, though. They want to sack me. Uh -huh. Anytime the rich come with that, tell them to sow. Don't give them empty prayer. God will not honor it. I don't think you heard what I'm saying. What did Jesus tell that other rich man that came to him? Give them instruction to release. He said, ah, pastor, okay, I will do it. Now, when God answers, he said, no, you do it to get his commitment. Not to get, after he has answered. Go to that place and roof the church. Or if it's all the cement, or look at what we're doing for feed the pong. Go and sponsor it. And then you get favor of heaven. Look at it, look at it. Is this one that you can tell so in faith? Believe God to give you the seed. You see these ones. And they do it. God brings the seed. And from there he changes their lives. Because you don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. He that observes the wind. We not sow. If you start checking what is in your pocket. The condition. You will not. And you will remain in that state. Just like faith brings them salvation. Faith will get them out of poverty. That's the way it works. God gives seed. End time to deal with God. Partnership. Bless me with this money. I'll put it in the building project. i use it to sponsor this. And you will see what God will do. He first gives you that money. You are faithful. He will bring the fund for you to do the business you've been looking for. The life of the family changes. But the other one, don't tell them to give God by faith. Start by Releasing. Because some of them will have the money. Then, then they will say, God, when you bring it, I'll give it. They are joking. You don't know who God is. But, you know, you will ask a mad God to go and eat the one they are hiding. Yes, so that's what he does, in case you don't know. <laughs> okay, look at verse 6. But you have despised the poor. He's talking to the rich. Okay, to pastors. Do not the rich men oppress you. The David who is rich can't do it because he's poor in the heart. He was a shepherd boy. God took him out from there. Those people remember. That's why he can say, I can be a gatekeeper in the house of God. He's not coming to fight with the priest over position in church. I don't mind doing or should you guys be, be, be doing. You see? He, he thinks about building the whole church, building God a house. Is this one that have confidence in the flesh that give God problems? It is self-confident people. Either they are confident in their talents or their gifts, their money, something that God gave them. You know the message on still worship now? Why are you boasting over something you receive? He came in naked. Why would you not use something that God see gave you to attack, to be a problem to him instead of being a service? When you cultivate the culture of service, you are not power hungry. Is he not the rich that oppress you? Why are you respecting them too much when they come? And draw you before judgment seats. They are the ones that can sue you, sue church, sue pastor, or start whatever. Come and answer before the board. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called. That one that do gossip, do hold some. And, and for some reason, people will just attend the meeting because they have given power. Call meeting behind the pastor's back. Now, you guys that I mean, why is it that they are the ones you don't give more respect? Because of eyes. Because somebody brought a little offering. He has seized your ministry, put it in the pocket. <laughs> He's now the one dictating how the church runs. One lady just came in. Just came to your office and just gave you one fat check. And that is it. You lost your bearing. She can now be misbehaving in church. You can't correct her. 
to hell with that Jezebel. Spiritual authority controls everything, including finance. It's not the gift you bring that satisfies the altar. It's the altar that satisfies your gift. Don't let anybody intimidate a priest with a gift. Verse 8. If you fulfill the loyal law, the loyal law is the law of love. According to the scripture, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressor. So the law convicts you. And verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. Verse 11. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if you commit no adultery, but if you kill, you have also become a transgressor of the law. So you don't want because of just discrimination between brethren and you become guilty of other things you didn't commit. They now treat you like Amroba, like adulterer, like you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be. No, you don't want to be. You don't want to be. That, that's tiny thing. You are not guilty of. You don't want to be. Because it will be busy. It will be good that I went around, slept with everybody I wanted, did everything, and I can now go to hell and know I, I deserve it. Than that I'm here trying to serve God. It's inside church. I introduce another form of corruption. And then I, I bear the same consequence with all the people who did all the big, big things. You know, I've always said it. If you only kill one person and somebody killed 1,000, both of you are arrested. Do you think the judge will say, you, you're only just one? Let's have mercy. That's not how they say. They give you the sentence for murder. That's one aspect of God that the children of Israel told them once, say your, your, your ways are not equal. Uh, this, this thing is not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. How can I? Okay, for doing partiality in church now, you are not uh, lining me up with adultery. That's somebody's wife. Oh, this is adultery and killing. Ah, uh ah. -uh. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, nor trusting on certain riches. Is these people that have confidence in what they have that create problems? But in the living God who giveth us all things richly to enjoy, verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good work. Remember, the instruction to pastors is to charge them. You're not begging them. You're not begging them. If they don't want to have money and go to hell, if they want to open that eye of the needle and pass, this is the secret. They do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Find one thing. If you are true with your beauty, if it is land, you are paying. Give them. You hear Pastor Mike you saying, you, go put that money in that land. Go pay that thing. Point them to tangible projects because sometimes when you don't give them tangible things, they think he yeah, is pastor. Tangible thing. The mayor of Kiev said they come into but he won't pay his tithe. He won't. We we'll just go and drop that small offer and walk away. One day, some people will engage him. He say, "You want me to make that black man rich, Nigerians?" So, Pastor Sunday, he won't give tithe in church. Very wealthy man. Pastor Sunday started asking God, "How do I deal with people like this?" He said, "Don't you know how to deal with them? Give them specific project. One of the best that they like is is either a tangible building they see it. You go and do this roofing, or you." Pay for the land. You take him there. He sees the thing. He, some of them will even ask to complete the negotiation for you. Because they want to be sure you are not. No problem. He wants to be part of it. Let him be. Pay for it. Or he said the best even is to give them a project that has to do with the poor. Because he gives them a, a feel good something. That they did something that helps somebody. So that's how they started the soup kitchen. That where they feed people every day. And they ask the man. So he started sponsoring it. 
She said, sponsor him. After the first year, he now called him and said, I want to double. And so by that time, the number of people that are fed every day jumped to about 3,000 a day. One person is paying for it. Then, you know the next thing? He now started paying his tithes. We well, said, this church is really a good church. They are helping the poor. And the day they wanted to jail Pastor Sene, he's the one that volunteered his life. I would, you'd rather kill me than touch that man. Have you seen now? If you don't understand this side, like government, to get the respect of government, it's not just answering Pentecostal. They, most of them don't respect Pentecostal pastors. And record what you are doing. Then you are doing some, these are things, record it. Somebody said, hmm. How can the Bible say when you give something to the poor? Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That can be when you are helping brethren or, or your brother. Jesus said, let men see your good works. That they might give glory to your father, which is in... Because it's a tool for mission. If they don't see it, how will it produce conversion? How will it lead to their salvation? The ones that are hardened against the gospel, that's what softens them. Then gradually they are now open. Don't do social whatever and hide it. That's the gossip that should be going all over town. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Verse 8, 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Let me tell you, apart from that they are preparing themselves for the last days, they are also preparing themselves against the time of shaking. Because sometimes bad times hit people that are wealthy. God will remember what they have done and reinstate them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But then also in preparation for the last days, then he said finally that they may lay hold on what? You want to have money and make heaven. This is the secret. That's the secret. Go back one verse before. That's 18. Those four instructions. Do good. Be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. For example, ready to distribute. They even do who have grown that practicing, they come to church with church, just looking for any need in the house of God. They don't wait for pastor because they've been taught until it has now become a culture for them. Now, give me an amplified of just this verse. Church them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be liberal and generous of heart, ready to share with others. And the way to do it is you as a pastor should create the structure through which this should be channeled. If you don't and leave them directly with brethren, the poor exploit the rich. They will exploit them to the point that they might run away from church. They will be so abused that they might, you end up losing them. So you create the structure. You don't just have welfare department. You should have many. Many department dealing with different types of social initiatives. You can have a department focusing on football, talent. You can have one focusing on talent development. And it doesn't matter what social project, each of them need money. Isaiah chapter 2, you know that prophecy. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the mountains and raised above the hills. The highlight for them, all nations shall flow into it. The question is, this is prophecy for end time church. The question is, what is the strategy and the structure that can enable a whole nation flow into the kingdom? And not just one nation, many nations. Is one of the biggest challenge um, God is facing now because church has not been able to download clearly this thing and that's what i've been sharing with you since i came here this morning 
the supernatural plays a major role in seeing this happen. Revival, supernatural healings, miracles. But social initiative play a major role in seeing this thing happen. Then verse 3, many people shall go. Highlight that one again, many people. They will go and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall do what? Shall go for the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. What is the secret that will bring many people, cause many, a massive yeah, the video I showed you yesterday, you saw where revival is causing something like that. In a short while, about 4 million passed through. There's another one, if we look at, about 6 million within three years. 6 million. So one of the magnets is when the presence of God is in a church and God is touching life supernaturally. That's one. The other one is when a church is demonstrating love in what? Action. Everybody might not be using gifts of healing and miracles. But in every church, there are people with those gifts. So the pastor that you don't have special gifts of healing or whatever doesn't mean anything. Find there are your people in your church. All this fire that is calling on people, if you know what it means, put them in a group, create that department. Every Sunday, people who are sick, yeah, people who have deliverance, the other side, and they will clean up. And that church will so grow and multiply. If you think the gifts are not in your church, call for a prayer meeting and ask the Holy Spirit to pour those gifts on people and you will see what will happen. Don't be intimidated that you lay hands on this woman that is dying and nothing happened. And the sister from prayer department lays hand and she says, Don't worry, there are different departments and gifts in the body. Now you have to allow ministry to be beyond just your individual gifts. So the structure is now the problem. Because, you know, there was a vision that was shown to us in connection with this year. And a very powerful wind was blowing and fishy so much fish it was the ocean and i called all our pastors and we moved into the sea to go and fish and everybody carried their boats you know these boats are churches and i said fishes are everywhere this season this is the breeding season they're everywhere Make sure you load your boat, you go and drop and come back and all that. And this whole thing was going. And after we looked and saw people, you look into their boat, they don't even have boat is empty, you don't have three or four fishes. You look, they have many of Dominion State pastors not making. And I was harassing the senior pastors too. Go and help and see. Because we, it was at that moment we were able to look and see what the problem was. The problem was the tool they are using to fish. In a sea, some people came with hook. So they are picking one one. And they will throw one hook. It takes time before it catches one, they will put. And I was screaming, go and bring net. Then there were a few that brought nets, very small nets. They catch big fishes, you know, the net is tearing. I say, And the Lord said, explaining, he said, the only thing that can limit the ministry now that I'm giving this ministry, you know, this nation and all of that is structure, structure, structure. That's why I asked Pastor Andrew to deal with it. But I know the midst of you, we're not attending those training. Structure, structure, structure. So what I'm putting here is structure for growth. Actually, I'm going to talk to you a lot about this this year. Let me list about five you need to start developing immediately. 
and turn all of them into tools of mission and consolidation. Number one, because I'm going to ask Dr. Hussein to be again in committee because of this, is the G12 structure. We call it the cell structure. Remember that, first of all, the individual starts a cell. Then, as the cell is growing, he starts picking out 12 people. So he still holds the cell. The cell should grow into a church, satellite church from there to a church. But apart from the cell, he now picks out 12 people. He has seen and has capacity for. He enters into a strong agreement with them to mentor them for leadership. Those ones... That group he separates out. He meets another day with them. So he has two meetings. That is the one you call the G12 group. The, what he does with that group is not what he does with the cell. The cell is used for outreaches, for reaching people, for follow-up, and all those things. But this, this one is for training disciples and growing sons. It's for producing mighty men for God. Start cells everywhere. Fill your city with cells. You don't have the structure. The cells are the net catching people every time. Give them goals. Give them goals. At least 12, 12 goals, 12, 12 souls, whatever, this year. And so the different people are catching. So that, that's how you can take your city. Don't go, and you think it's that altar call you do on Sunday. That's your, net, your hook that you're using. You don't have a structure to help you grow. Second structure, satellite church structure. Third structure, branch church structure. How many churches did you say you have in Abuja? Okay, as at the time I asked, he had about 25. Do they hold Sunday services? 22 that hold Sunday services are branch churches. 22 branches. The ones that don't hold Sunday services are satellite churches. Now, see what you do with satellite church. You look at your whole neighborhood. You start many churches in those neighborhoods. But the satellite church feeds the mother church. It's just a strategy to win more people. And that strategy helps you to start growing more pastors. Because with that, you start seeing the potentials of your people. So you look at your whole neighborhood, you scatter maybe 12 satellite churches around, targeting different things. But they do their meetings within the week. But Sunday, they carry all their members to... Your church will so grow. You give them goals. The goals you give to them, in more than goals you give to cells. And they also have the right to plant cells to cover their territory very well. A satellite church can now grow so powerfully that it can, you can make it a branch. And branches should meet with the mother church possibly once a month. You should have a unified event. And that unified event can be a Friday prayer miracle rally. Redeem does it every... Because once you have groups, small groups, and you don't cause them to meet in a united whatever, you have started creating division and, and problem. Remember that there are arms, but it must be one body. So you must have something once a month. Let's assume you don't want to be touching their Sunday services. It can be Friday night. It can be a VG kind of thing. It can be Saturday morning. Everybody comes. And when they come and see the big picture, it strengthens all those ones that are small. They go back, they will have confidence to walk. Because somebody that is just joining them and just come there and he sees just eight people. Uh, is this, what, this, what kind of church is this? End of the moon. The pastor takes them to go, hey, is this, this is our church. He goes back there. Anything you are saying. And that place will grow. That's the dynamics. The two must be going on all the time. 
But one of the structure you need, net, to win a lot of fish, satellite church. To go after different areas, you do topography of your city, different parts. Put one there on Sunday, a carry chatter buses, be carrying people to church, be whatever. Then the ones that have reached certain whatever, nobody should really start Sunday service without a minimum of 80 to 100 members. Because usually there might be areas that are a little far there, whatever, or there is this community that you need to have them to start their own service. And they are still part of one church. It, the greatest hindrance to the implementation of vision is the absence of structure. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 01 792 6879. 0803-435-7959 Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 01792-6879-0803-435-7959-0803-590-9900-0805-315-3823.